So here's a little issue found. I wanted to demonstrate that without this post that I've made, um, there's no post in here. And I was in the video of dissembling this, I said, why is there no post? I mean, some of them have a, a post piece. You can see here, this one has a post piece. Uh, this one does, but it's very, very tiny. And so in the center there, there is no post, which allows the contacts uh, to move a little bit. See how they move? Okay, so this is unreliable because as this moves forward, it gets stuck and this shit happens. So this was in a JG. I don't know if it's used or whatnot, or switched in, but that's unreliable. So you make a little post and you put it right in between it. Let's see if I can do this uh, on camera here. It's hard to move. Okay, so you put the post right in between it and then you super glue that. Okay, I added a little bit of height to it so I can grab it easily and put it in there while super gluing it. Now, when it goes in, it will always be reliable. So you must, you must have the post. Now if this is centered, um, the trolley, which it will be, it will always uh, move like this. There we go. It will move like this. It's hard for me to do with one hand, but you get the idea. Alright, there was a lot of uh, mesh issues with this gearbox because just about every single thing, excluding some of the screws, is not stock. Safety. Semi. Full auto. I had to modify the, t the tap up plate, or excuse me, not the tap plate, the selector plate. You can see it's modified for the CCI uh, cutoff lever. I had to um, put a new screw in for the, tr for the trigger housing and cut it down so that the selector plate could go back and forth. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. No, it's not. It's hiding behind it. I had to remove glue off the trigger housing because uh, it was blocking and it couldn't be inserted. I had to um, cut down right there so that you could get the uh, contacts ready to be wired. What else did I do? Man, I did a whole bunch of stuff. Um, making the selector plate uh, custom. I had to also customize the cutoff lever a little bit uh, to make everything move smoothly, which it does, at least in this body. I don't know, you know, with the new body it may be a little different, um, but everything moves smoothly. We don't have anything getting uh, stuck by the cutoff lever. It does go into full auto, it does go into semi, and it does go into safety, and uh, I checked looking on the inside. Uh, through the cutoff lever. Um, just about everything is done right now. So we're moving on to wiring uh, the MOSFET for this. Oh, I even had to modify the cutoff spring because it was extremely long. It was way too long. And it seems that it's not uh, moving down for some reason right now. That might be another whole issue I need to work on. should still work. You can see the cutoff lever came down so everything should still work pretty fine. Everything's smooth. Alright, this is what the gearbox is supposed to look like when you open it. This is a job good done. So now I'm going to close it. I've already done the angle engagement uh, with What's going to be interesting is that the sorba thing comes out to about here. Once compressed, it's probably about here. Now, according to math, if that's from here to here, that should be the same volume for your short type barrel. The spring gets compressed the same amount as the piston comes back because it's on the same 
release teeth, release tooth position. So in theory, in theory, this should shoot the same with your short tight barrel. So we should be able to get the 400 plus with this spring, in theory, um, from what we see here. And that's going to have to be tested out. This is the first time I've ever done my own piston made and then tested this out. So uh, we'll go ahead and install this and set it up. Where's this? Now this is a little tough to install, so what you got to do is palm it and hold the spring a certain way. So does America in its own leadership. Absolutely. See how I hold it here? You have to do the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. And you can switch hands here. And then switch hands again. And this was good to talk to you. I think that whatever people think of your brother, he was president of this great country. And the documentary tomorrow is fascinating. And then push down. It's that simple. Now we've got it in position. I just have to work on the interversal latch. Thank you. I'll be looking for a real documentary one these days. And the trigger. Okay, this hamster fet doesn't have its own fuse, so I'm going to hook up my own, and then I'll probably hook one up to it once I'm done testing. Uh, this is too loose. I don't know why uh, I put this in here, and it's very, very loose. So I may have to pull these up or something, because obviously that's not going to be cool when you're running a gun and you won't get as high as rate of fire if you're uh, if you can't get a really good connection your rate of fire will actually drop um, when your resistance gets higher okay now I just need a battery and here we go test this is the first time doing test Okay, full auto, semi, Got a lot of overspin. So this is finished. Uh, it's just got a lot of overspin. The antiversal latch. I can't tell where the piston is right now. Piston's at the front. Um, Well, that's probably the closest to the front right there. Um, just to show that it does have air.
So this thing has a lot of overspin. I'm used to active braking. Uh, this is not going to cut it. So um, in this setup, suggestion active braking definitely. Uh, you just can't use. I was checking for heat, by the way. I don't feel any heat. I just feel the only thing I feel, and I mean it's barely warm, is the is the end of the motor right here, very end. Um, but semi, I can see where the cutoff is. It just has massive overspin. See, it's it's cutting off. It's just massive overspin, massive. That's probably the closest to the front. Um, so I would suggest active braking on this. But this is done. And I'm going to open it up and see what the internals look like um, after running that crazy uh, piston idea here. So, um, But I'm pretty sure, because it still seems to be running fine, that we don't have any issues. You just need to active brake. Uh, you know, when you're using 11.1 volt light, but you're using 13 to 1 gears, you need to go active braking. And it, the thing is, with active braking, thing, people think that your motor will brake. Um, with active braking, this is not actually intentionally true because uh, uh, the best way to say it is if I've been working on so many guns with active braking, how come I don't have this issue that people talk about? Shooting the gun all the time, active braking doesn't break your motor. The, what breaks your motor is use, not cleaning it. Um, you need to maintain um, the parts to it. You know, if your brushes are worn out, that's an issue that you have to deal with. Um, something like this, you can just see <laughs> as massive overspin in a 13 to 1 uh, ratio. So. Um, I will have to chrono this, um, but I will look at it first on the inside. Uh, we didn't see it break down while shooting. Okay, I'm going to open her up now. You want to get the front undone because on this gun, it's the hardest to move. It's the cylinder barely fits properly. Okay, now push down all the gears in the interversal latch. You want everything to stay in place as you lift this up. There we go. It looks like the uh, tablet plate didn't spin back properly, but that's okay. If this is something like a DSG build, you want to make sure you hold this back all the way as it comes back. Okay, is there anything in here? Nope. I don't see anything other than grease, which you're supposed to have. And let's just go ahead and uh, pull out the piston. None of the teeth look messed up. Everything looks fine. And there you go. Nothing looks uh, messed up. So you may question, uh, does this work? 
Nothing looks messed up. Teeth and everything looks fine. So we want to see the buffer, right? Here again is the piston just to show. Looks like a lot of grease went everywhere though. I didn't even put that much grease in there. I guess it just all flung out in the buffer areas where it's going to be. Um, so just go ahead and lift this up. Pull this off. And take this out. You want to see the buffer, right? And there's the buffer. Huge, gigantic buffer. Seems to have no issue. And I don't see any black stuff that got into the cylinder head. I think this is a done deal. This is awesome. I will say it did sound a little quieter to me on impact, which I could see, you know, right here. This is believable. Looks like there's some glue though. Yeah, it's just glue. Other than that, this looks this looks like uh, this works. Yeah, looking at the pit, the sector gear. Um, yeah, everything looks great, man. Not anything looks bad. Let's look at the piston again. No, this looks good. It's just got a gigantic uh, support in the back of the pickup. You can see there's no pre-engagement. Um, it's well greased. Everything looks good. And everything tested fine. So uh, there's no extra wear on the pinion other than what it started with, which, with how I was given it. Um, of course, every time I do this, I always, I always check beveled's pinion and I don't get any extra wear after that. Um, No oh, man, everything looks good to go. This is a done deal. All right, very interesting combination right here. For sure. For sure. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll catch you later.